It's Sunday. Sunday is the day where I do a little job on my own car, if I can. And today that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. Sunday's also a day where quite often I have the yard entirely to myself. Very unlikely any carpet people are going to turn up for anybody else. Even the man with the camper vans in here. And that's why I can just drive through the gate and leave my car with a level of abandon that I normally wouldn't do. Look at that. The way I've parked out there, it's rude. That's how some other people park normally. But look at this. You couldn't get a car through that side or this side either. So no access to this yard here where if it was mine, I probably could find a way of fitting about 60 cars in here. Imagine Project Nigel becoming so successful from videos that uh, I could buy the land. I could have it just for myself and for you people. Right, let's do something realistic now. A cup of tea, obviously, with these fluffy things that keep coming from the tree as an you know, for extra flavouring. Last year, I made a video on how to change the oil on the K-Series and I used Nigel for this video. And I was a little bit sarcastic and I was treating people like they might not have a clue. I won't do that this time. Anyway, the, the thing is, that was last year. And so, really, it's due again. The time doesn't half fly. Yeah, I did have a look for that video to see when it was. It was just under a year ago, but about 4,000 miles since. Which means that uh, it's due. According to the Rover Handbook, it will tell you to change the oil every 9,000 miles. I mean, it could be eight or it could be 12. I don't know, I've not actually had a look. But the thing is, um, I don't really like that. That's too long, too long. In fact, the 4,000 miles that it's done, I consider to be a thousand too many. But the fact is, I didn't realize I'd done that many miles in it. And that's why that's happened. Oil change every 3,000 miles. That is the plan for Nigel. And it will be the plan I will stick with. Now, the first thing is to get the temperature quite high because that will improve the flow of the oil. And it wasn't my intention to start doing another instructional video. But I mean, it's common sense, isn't it? If, it? if the oil's hot, it'll run better. If it runs better, more of it will come out. And that's what you want. You want it all to come out. To get to the oil sump, you need to be underneath the car. And the best way of doing that is to drive up some ramps like that. Ensure that you line your car up with the ramps because what you don't want to happen, believe it or not, is to drive off the edge of the ramps. It is very important that you don't rush this. If it takes you a couple of minutes, that's fine as long as you don't break the thing. Perfect. It doesn't need to go all the way to the end, that's fine. There's no point in taking any further chances by trying to drive it any further up, because that is fine. With it being a nice warm day, that will help bring the engine up to temperature more quickly. And as you can see, it is up to temperature on there. Here's a very useful tip for you. If you leave the engine running, whilst you undo the sump plug, the oil pump will pump out all of the oil for you. I would dearly like to just leave that bit in, but now I'm going to have to correct it, just in case. Turn the engine off before you drain the sump. Just turn it off, turn the engine off. But yes, all that, 
unnecessary explanation just in case just in case my joke backfires and somebody complains at me because they've ruined their engine right okay last time i did an oil change i couldn't find my oil filter remover and uh, and then i did find it after i borrowed one and, I, and so i put mine in that special place where i knew i'd find it and and obviously you know what's coming next i don't remember where that special place was so i found it in the brushes drawer not sure of the relevance there You need a bucket as well, by the way, because obviously the oil is going to spill out and it's going to have to go somewhere. And the chances are he's going to miss the bucket a little bit. So this thing down here, which is very comfortable at the moment, is going to double up as a bit of an oil uh, soak. Oh yes, what always happens as well is the sump plug is very likely to fall out and end up in the bucket. So it's good to try and catch it straight away. Oh, there we go. I've got it. Got it all mostly in the bucket as well, which is good. Now, obviously, I spilled a little bit on my hands there, but look at that, it's just wiped straight off, which shows the condition of the oil was actually very good. Do you know why? Because if it was really grotty, it'd be so full of carbon deposits and stuff, it'd stain your hands. So, that's what you're looking for for your hands to remain clean. They're doing an oil change. Almost good enough to reuse on a less important car. Now here's my oil and there's my filter. And these are just your generic motor factors stuff. It's nothing really expensive or overly fancy. But being as this is only going to be in the engine for 3,000 miles anyway, it doesn't need to be you know, the absolute top quality stuff. Time to get the oil filter off. I've not used this in quite a while. Uh, basically, it's got a heel on there. It goes around it and the heel pushes against it and provides enough friction to push the thing off. That, that's Nigel, free of oil and filter. So now I've just got to put the stuff back on, which is quite easy. It's just a matter of putting that sump plug in and the uh, oil filter. Now some say what you should do is put a little bit of oil around the seal on the filter. That's to help uh, make it easier to get back off next time. But if you're not going to put it on overly tightly and you know what you're doing yourself, I don't think that's quite as much of a, a worry. Pull the filter out of the box. And this is where you possibly find that you've got the wrong filter. But I have. I've got the correct one. Just to show you, all you need to do is that, and that obviously puts enough oil just around that seal if you want to do it that way. Because it's got a nice big rubber seal on there, you just need to do that up hand tight. One of the good things about doing these kind of jobs yourself is that you can do your own checks. You're responsible for doing things up properly and that means that um, you can make sure that you don't do them up too tightly. You take your car to a garage I think sometimes they do things up a little bit too much just to make sure that nobody comes back and says oh this has come undone. What's going on? My car's broken. I've had to take the bus. I've run out of sandwiches on the bus. 
I've got a headache, my teeth are hurting, and it's all because you did my car wrong, that kind of thing. So as a precaution, they do things up a little bit too tightly and, um, you know, let it be the next person's job to undo it again. That's, oh, it's just a theory, really. Yep. There's still a tiny bit of uh, oil leaking out of the, the drain hole, but it is just a little bit. How long should you wait for? Well, I think I've waited long enough. That is a good five minutes there. And then, nipping this back up, let's uh, just remove the last of the drips from the bottom of the sump. And I mean, another good thing about doing that is if, uh, if you remove the drips, then when you do it up and decide that you're finished with it, if it's still dripping, then you need to tighten it up. Not sure what the torque setting should be for this, but I would say it's that. Next job is about as important as it gets, which is putting some new oil in. Because if you don't put new oil in, the consequences could be disastrous and you'll run out of sandwiches. So, filter, not filter, funnel's quite a useful thing. Also, how many litres do you need? Good question. I think it's four and a half. I can't quite remember. So, I could do the usual Google search thing to find out. Or I could just use my common sense and fill it up to its right level. So I'm going to go for four and a half. So now, as one minor precaution, let's just have a quick look underneath to check nothing spilling out. It's not. 107775. 107,775. That is the current mileage. Doing an oil change on a case here is such an easy job that you don't even get dirty, which is nice. Here's a rather disappointing one. Yesterday, I did the MX-5 or Mazda Unos video with my friend Carl, and I was particularly pleased with it. I thought it was a very good, very funny video, in fact. But I lost two subscribers straight away. <laughs> what, is that just because it's not a Rover? Is that all people want before? Is Rovers, is it? Is it really? Perhaps I need to uh, explain my channel a bit better. Yeah, I like rovers. I like all British cars. But I like cars in general. And, in all honesty, I will take on any car for a test drive because I think it's fun to do. I don't, you know, I'll take on a car that you won't like and I won't like. But I'll still drive it and tell you what I think of it. When Nigel gets to nearly 11,000 miles, we'll have another oil change video. That'll be a treat. And uh, that'll probably be um, next year. I'd imagine it would be next year. The idea isn't to be using it all the time. <laughs> Thank you.
Piggy's ears are the inspiration behind Jonathan Ross's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> 